He said, we're going to do something to your brain. Hello everyone, welcome to Dead Air One. I hope you're prepared for a forgettable luncheon. This is Christina, my wife. She's been working with me on YouTube for about five years, uh, working the back end and looking at all those lovely stats and wonderful comments. Uh, how are you doing today, dear? Good, dear. Good. How are you, dear? Good. <laughs> uh, so this is a, a show we're planning on doing, a podcasty type show we're planning on doing every Sundays. It's not going to replace any of my normal content. It's not going to replace Sans Hosen. I'd love to do more Sans Hosen with Damien, but he has a job and a life in London, and I live in America, so it's, it's kind of a bit difficult. And I think Christina might actually keep me more on track. We actually have subjects... Taskmistress. Topics. Mm. Taskmistress. Well, that's very gendered of you. Should we start there? What is a woman? Oh no, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. That's further down the list because it's going to take me a minute to get ready for that. Yeah, right, okay. So, yeah. Um, so what, what are we going to talk about every what week? Are we, what are we going show? to talk about? I guess mostly TV and perhaps cultural things. Yeah, TV, movies, video games, stuff that doesn't warrant like a full video on the channel, but is worth talking about. Yeah. A um, little bit of like news, internet drama stuff, perhaps. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever yeah. we were doing that week. Yeah. I mean, as well, I, you know, if I had all the time in the world, I would make videos about all that. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, if I had Bernard's watch, and I could just, you know, if I had a watch that could stop time. Mm. Or a DeLorean. So, like, with a DeLorean, I'd have to, like, make a video during the week and then go back and then go in back time. And make a new one. So there'd be, two, one. there'd be at least two me's then working side by side. I need two computers it's working side by side. You can use mine. I think my idea of the watch that stops time would be better for it. probably it. is more effective. Yeah, and then everyone's like, how's he getting all these videos out? Yeah. Yeah, this is the man who also did the 600 meters in, like, two seconds. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Olympic winner, George. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of everything. He ruined yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So what are we talking about first? Alright, first, um, Succession, um, which we very briefly discussed on the pilot episode of this, which is on Patreon. Um, kind of just a tester. Mm -hmm. um, it's not lit as well as this. No, this is better. I like this better. Less hot in here. Um, and yeah, we at that point that we recorded that, I think that we'd watched like most of the first season, or you did at least. Mm -hmm. um, I was ill on the couch most of the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, ill. Ill. Uh -huh. um, and uh, according to George, I kept waking up on occasion. And saying, it's shit. This is shit, turn it off. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so then we were like, well, let's watch a little bit more. Because it. I'd read that it was, this was going to be the last season that was coming up, which is better for me because I hate waiting for things. I'd rather just binge an entire thing. Yeah, and, and not knowing... I mean, HBO sort of less guilty of it than Netflix, but not knowing, like, is this actually going to end, or is it just going to be... It's going to go on forever. Sa or, or Santa Clarita dieted, where it's just like, we've cancelled it yeah. on a cliffhanger. It just ends. Yeah. Or whatever, you know. Never saw that. Drew Barrymore, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Timothy Oliphant. Zombies or something? Yeah. It's it's very... It's a comedy. It's yeah, okay. very silly. Right. Yeah, and fun. Okay. Uh, so anyway... Yeah, so although we... saying that, I didn't... I found out that they were going to cancel it, mm -hmm. like, as I was on the penultimate episode, and it just ruined it for me. I just stopped watching it, so I have no idea. Maybe the last episode was awful, but... Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, we decided to kind of revisit it, knowing that it was going to end, and mm -hmm. watched a bit more, and... Um, well, we finished it. We, you know... Yeah, I mean, I think you saw more of the first season than I did, because um, yeah. I was kind of in and out of being asleep. Yeah, you were present. I was in the room, on yeah. the couch, yeah. splayed out. Face down, splayed out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah face down. Um, and you were like, well, there are some things that got better about it, so why don't we kind of revisit it? So then we continue to watch mm -hmm. um, more closely this time. And now that we've finished the entire series, I feel like I've come full circle back to where I was. So there was a bit where you liked it. Yeah, um, I thought... Um, which was it? There, there were things that I liked about it, mm -hmm. and I was like, well, this could be interesting. If this is going somewhere, there could be some kind of payoff for this. Um, and then by the end, felt very frustrated. Right. What are your feelings? I guess the same. I don't think I ever, like, had a middle bit where I was like, oh, I'm more into this than I was. Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah, I have, I guess, I suppose mixed feelings about it. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I didn't like it overall. I didn't like the way it ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it felt extremely repetitive and yeah, yeah. That was probably like my biggest problem with it as well. Because like the acting is all pretty good. Brian Cox is great in everything he's in. I can't um, have you buy me a first class ticket to America. I can't have you put me in a five-star hotel for a month. <laughs> for a month. Yeah. yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, for a month. Yeah, very funny. He's great in lots of stuff. Um, and I was surprised at how much I liked Kieran Culkin in it. He's very watchable. Yeah. Um, and maybe some of that is, like, the writing for his character. But I think his delivery really is pretty good. I suppose the way I feel about it is absolutely typical of how I end up feeling about a lot of... I wouldn't even just say modern TV. A lot of TV. Mm -hmm. I thought the acting was good. I thought the dialogue when it was just two people talking was good. I think that dialogue, inevitably when you've got three people or more in the room, is really difficult because in real life people are always talking at e talking over each other, they're always finishing each other's sentences. Yeah, that's really hard to do and I, that's when it started to get not believable. But I, th you know, I thought the way it was directed was good, I liked the way it was shot with all the fucking... Yeah, the Aaron yeah. Sorkin... We're doing a Republican video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I liked all that too. Uh, I guess after a couple of seasons, I started getting really frustrated because it felt like we were just going in circles on the same story beats over and over. That, you know? Yeah. Um, Greg over here, something he shouldn't, and tells it to someone else, and then this causes chaos, and then that just happens again. So, you know? um, spoiler warning, although we're not really spoiling anything, you can, you can guess. It's about a succession of a big company, which is, I would say, pretty much analogous with Fox News. Fox News, not exactly. Yeah. They they also own a theme park in. Yeah, it's not a, in, a one to one thing, no. but it but it, that's basically what it is. It's basically yeah. what it is, and definitely when you look at Murdoch and Lachlan, all mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. But um. Yeah, for me, the problem was was that. I think I understand what their arc was of. The dad is getting old, who's going to succeed him as the CEO of this company? All the children will be rich and, you know, powerful, but who's yeah. going to be the, the Regard king? Regardless, yeah, they're all going to be billionaires still. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, I can see that the, the point of it was the children actually, you know, whilst they do, you know, want to sort of break away from him and want to be good, it's only ever being good, i.e. not, you know, doing what he's doing and feeding people hatred for profit. Mm. Um, as this show has it, it's all the children sort of want to be good, but but then that isn't as important to them as power, and that's kind of the point of the show. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that you know, at the end, that you know, they've learned nothing. Yeah. And again, that's the that's the point. It's just um, I really wanted more of an arc, not necessarily where anyone changed, mm -hmm. but where there was like some comeuppance or some upheaval. Yeah, something to. It would have been like so much better as like a six-part miniseries. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, and yeah, like like you say, like I get that part of the purpose was like these people don't learn anything, they don't change, um, they're awful people. But that can work in other places. Like sunny. Sunny. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Um, it works great in that because it's hilarious. It's a comedy. It's a comedy. So... Um, yeah. And it makes sense that the characters never learn anything because that's kind of the charm. Yeah. yeah, and it's like a riff on sitcoms a bit. Yeah, a bit, and, yeah. You know. um, but compared to this, which... It, it had so much time as well, like five seasons of this. Four. Four, mm -hmm. was it four? Four seasons of this, where it just doesn't feel like anything ever happens, you know? Yeah. They go to somebody's party mm -hmm. and have a bad time, and then that happens again in a different season. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I've seen this before. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and um, sort of as time goes on, you know, it's all the same power struggles. They're all struggling for the same, you know, chiefdom, really. And, um, yeah, I thought there was no payoff at the end. Yeah. You know, again, spoiler warning, Brian Cox dies in something like se uh, episode three or four of the last season. Mm -hmm. And then, then the actual succession battle starts properly. And... Um, yeah, the board ends up voting to sell the company and make everyone even more rich, but not in, but none of the kids are in control anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it really would have worked know. better if Brian Cox had died earlier, uh, even though he is great to watch. From like a story perspective, I think it would work better if there was more of these succession. Yeah. You know. More of the actual succession. Yeah. Rather than... It really lacked like a like a streamlined story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's It feels like a whole bunch of asides put together. And I know lots of people like really love this show, but I just, you know, could get into it a little bit for a little while and then it just lost me. Yeah, I thought, thought it was kind of like Baby's first I, Claudius. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a BBC show from like 1970 and it moves at like maybe two miles an hour. Mm. It's very slow. But um, that's really good. Uh, and yeah, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't hate it or anything. And I didn't think it was like terribly written. Mm. Just, just it suffered from, you know, TV syndrome of, yeah. of squeezing as much out of it as possible. It's got to be, you know, a certain number of episodes and yeah, squeezing out as much as possible. Um from material that just wasn't all that interesting to me. Yeah, um, one thing, one positive thing I was thinking about is I don't think I've ever seen as, you know, as detailed a rep representation, although it's not completely accurate, I'm sure, as detailed a representation of, like, the executive suite, the C-suite of corporate America, mm. like that. You see, you see it in films and stuff, but this was just so much, and mm -hmm. yeah, I think that I think anyone who's worked in a place like that knows, yeah, it's cutthroat and horrible. Yeah, but I um, think if you haven't, you might not realize that. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, there was that. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted it to end because they keep hinting at the end of season three and four, uh, and in season four uh, about um, the. The Roys, the Murdochs, the Roys, you know, have all this political influence and they've essentially got Fox News and all these papers and they can, you know, really have a say in who come, who becomes the next Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. And there's all this background chatter about, like, well, is he a fascist? Mm -hmm. And all these, is going to do this? Like, do you believe in that? Like, I don't believe in that, but yeah. the money's there and all that. And I wanted it to end, like, the end of The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, where they're all in a, it's just like five years later... And they're all in a concentration camp or something. Yeah. Or the bit where, um, was it Roman and, um, not Mark Zuckerberg are on top of, like, a, a mountain. They're, like, hiking. And you're like, he's going to push him off. He's going to push him off. You he's going to dock handle him. He's going to dock handle him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, and, like, oh, no. No. That would be something. Yeah. If something happened. That's kind of, like, my long-running issue. I just feel like... Not enough is happening. It somewhat yeah. reminds me of the thick of it. I don't know if you've seen that. Mm. It's a BBC, BBC, BBC show. BBC, she, she. It's a BBC show, I think from like the two thousands, about like a, I suppose like a fairly junior minister in government, mm. and he's clueless, and the civil servants around him have to like do everything for him. But there's all this fighting, and it's kind of filmed in a same the same sort of quasi-documentary way, where it's not meant to be, like, fooling you into thinking it's a documentary. Yeah, it's not like a mockumentary, but... But the thing about right. the thick of it was, it was... It was a sitcom. Like, it, it, it doesn't look like a sitcom, it looks kind of similar, but it was, like, 30 minutes, and it was funny. Yeah. And I think this needed to be way more funny. Yeah, it needed way more humour. I think that would have helped a lot, just a bit of I levity. Th think if it had been funny, it could have gotten away with the... the yeah the story not really having an arc. And there were points where it felt like it was trying to be funny, but it didn't no, like... There were funny bits in it. Well, yeah. yeah, there is funny stuff in it, but, like, the very end where, um, Kendall is, like, on the beach, just staring out at the ocean, and this, like, big score comes in, that almost, like, bordered on comedy to me. You know what I mean? Because it was, like, this kind of epic music, and he's just standing there looking at the ocean, you know, not CEO, and... I don't know, there were, like... Because this was done by Adam McKay, right? Well, he pr he pr exec produced it. He was, was one of like one a of, dozen. One with like a dozen executive producers. So I don't Will know. Farrell, who knows how much input he had? Yeah. Probably more than the others. Probably more than the others. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, I kept thinking like while watching about another Adam McKay, Will Ferrell produced thing that I did not like. Don't look up. Um, was that Will Ferrell produced? Uh, I believe that it was both Will Ferrell and Adam McKay right. that were involved, yeah. Right. I think it was directed by so, as well. So we, I'm going to guess that your problem with, 
with those two things was that, that it has a single message that is spread until it is. Yeah, it's it's very, very one note. Um, and Which isn't always bad. You know, not always bad, no, but definitely, I mean, that was a frustrating watch. Like, I get it. I understand. People aren't doing anything about climate change. Do we need, like, an entire movie just hammering it in yeah. over and over? People aren't doing anything about climate change. Better jet in Leo. Yes, Jet and Leo from it's his a, yacht. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um but at least that had a like a solid like story. You know, like a yeah. through line. You know, they try to convince people and don't get listened to and then the world ends. Um you know, whereas, whereas this was like all over the place to me. I think the message in this is that's the nature of power. It's not gonna change or Yeah, rich people bad. You know, um which you know, I'm into that kind of stuff, but... <laughs> the message was the media quadrant of this society needs better oversight, better governmental <laughs> Something, division. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I can, I think I can see what they're trying to do with it. Um, but one thing that I kept thinking while we were watching as well is like, okay, I think this airs on Sundays. Mm. I like, I'm like, I wonder if this... Like, I can't remember when Game of Thrones went off the air, um, but it feels like this was trying to sort of, like, fill in that void, you know? Palace intrigue. Palace intrigue, yeah, but in yeah. Game of Thrones there's also, like, people dying and, like, battles, battles and... and shit like that, yeah, yeah so, um, whereas this was just, like, you know, the interior of a private jet, the interior of a limo, people talking. Yeah, and, and, and the same characters every week being like, yeah, you know that thing you thought we were doing together? I fucked you over on it. Yeah, and pretty you're not much. Doing that. Just, well, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. Oh, you got another deal. Oh, well, I'm going to fuck you over on this then. Yeah. And it just, it just, just, just uh, all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just found myself really bored with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what about you. Yeah, I mean, yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Again, I think if you had like distilled it into like eight episodes or something, one it season could have been really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the performances were really good. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. You know, all of them. Hmm? So. Yeah, they were. Yeah, are we so, done with Succession then? Yeah, just wasn't into it. Um, nope. Not really, no. Yep. So, alright then. I like to um, see, scrolling through Reddit, I like to see all the adverts featuring Brian Cox now. Yeah, like, this everywhere. was the intent, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't mind seeing him everywhere, that's fine. Yeah, do you like seeing J.K. Simmons selling you farmer's insurance? Luckily, I haven't had to watch a commercial in many years, so... That's a lie! We have to watch commercials all the time on YouTube. Well, I'm not watching them. I, I <laughs> mute it. You never then, had to watch one. And then play one. on my phone until it's over. Yeah. <laughs> or I can skip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could do the opposite and click on through. Start filling in forms. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to buy 10,000 cases of vitamin fuel. Vitamin fuel. Yeah. Yeah. It's full of vitamin. Um... So anyway, next, next thing I want to talk about, something we actually really liked, uh, it's the, the Curious Case of Natalia Grace. That was actually fascinating. Would you like to explain the basic of what that is? Uh, yes, I suppose so. Uh, it's a documentary about, um, my dog clicking, coming over. It's a documentary about, um, a family who adopt a what a six-year-old si mm. yeah they adopt a six-year-old little person she's got a very rare type of dwarfism uh, and they quickly start to believe that actually she isn't six years old she's an adult pretending to be a six-year-old mm -hmm. and the documentary takes us through why they thought this and what they did and then it turns out she was six mm -hmm. yeah and they dumped her in an apartment by herself at 11 years old uh, yeah mm-hmm and then everyone was like, why is she acting so weird? It's like, yeah, because she was... Because she was abused. She, yeah, and she's yeah. 10. Yeah, and they get into that as it goes on, some of the severe physical and emotional abuse that uh, the family themselves put her through, especially the mother. Um, yeah, it, yeah. So it's a twisty, turny tale yeah. where there's lots of contradictory stuff, and it features, uh, I think, um, what's his name? The dude. The dude! The man. You know, the man. What's his name? What man? The the man who's like... The dad? Yeah. 
Yeah, can't remember his name. The dad who was a quite a quite a watch. Quite a watch. Very kooky. Um, yeah. Very emotional. Uh, yeah, it was just fascinating. The um, one of the better documentary series that I've seen this year because we do watch a lot of them. Um, just yeah, it always had me wondering what was going to come next in this bizarre tale. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, some of the stuff that comes out just like it's just like whoa, cannot believe that. It was very interesting, yeah. Because when it starts out, like, um, when we were watching it, we're both like, yeah, like, you know, she kind of like does sound like she's older, and, yeah. you know, um, yeah, she does look older, like, in the features and stuff, and, yeah, this is fascinating. Like, yeah. is, is she a con artist? And do you remember when I said, why would anyone do that? Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Hmm. Oh, yes, <laughs> you see, go ahead. I <laughs> said, why would anyone masquerade as a child if they were an adult? And Christina said, so they don't have to work. So you don't have to get a job. Don't have to get a job. Yeah. Somebody will feed me and take care of me and... Is that the society we live in where it's like, there's someone with dwarfism <clears throat> and you go, why don't you have a job? Work at McDonald's, pretend to be a child. Hmm. What's she going to do at McDonald's? She's not going to be able to work at McDonald's. Well, she'd have to. Well, you're not going to be able to like reach the friars. You have to stuff. provide accommodations. Yeah, it's against what would, the, um, what would that look like? Ladders. I don't know. I'm just saying like... You can't like, you know, what would probably happen is they would not give her a job and say it was some other reason, not qualified, you know, versus like, we think you're too short. Yeah. That's I, how it works. It's terrible. For sure. You've got dwarfism, it should just be like, here, here's your stipend, go play tennis or something. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, yeah. yeah she you want a job, get a job. She but... suffered all kinds of other health problems too. She had like joint dysplasia. Yeah, well. Or she had difficulty like walking and, you know, she could and she seemed fine. She could run. Yes, but, but she had dwarfism. I mean, she yeah. was three feet tall. Yeah, very tiny. Um, <laughs> Why would you pretend to be a child to get out of a job? Being a child in someone's house, like be pretending to be a child in someone else's house. In a be... rich, in a rich family's house. And that would be a nightmare, like bedtime and. Yeah, what? I guess. Yeah. No. I don't know. I'm not saying I want to pretend to be a child for somebody, but you know, that was the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, right. Don't have to get a job. And maybe escape Ukraine. I don't know. They made it sound like the orphanage she came from was not, not a great. great not a great place. Yeah. Not like those swanky American orphanages. Yeah. Yeah, with their roofs. Probably I have no idea. Orphanages in America, they probably require the children to pay every month rent. No, you, That's America. You pay you pay <laughs> by working on the treadmill. Right? Uh to generate electricity. Uh, I was thinking more like churning grain, but yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, like one of those big work wheels, like an Oliver Twist. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. all right, never mind then. Yeah, do you have anything else to say about that other than we liked it? Yeah, not really. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much of that because there are so many twists and turns. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you like weird documentary stories, I'd recommend it because it's pretty fascinating. Just the entirety of the story, you know, like, they have, like, this 14-year-old son with autism who is, like, getting ready to do his master's degree and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, a genius. Yeah. Um, and all of this, just watching how everything, like, crashed down around, like, them becoming obsessed with the idea that she's not a child. Yeah. And, you know, and... To and, the point of abuse. To the point of abuse. And to be fair, like, they did have a doctor say, like, oh, she might not be, you know, that age... Um, and like an investigator saying like, oh, I don't know if the birth certificate from Ukraine is accurate, but then they take that and just like totally run with totally it. Totally run with it. And, um, yeah, like dump her off and... Yeah, and it was the mother driving it. The mother driving like, it, you weird. can tell. Weird. Yeah, and there's like a whole weird thing about the mother and father behind the scenes. It, it's interesting stuff, yeah. If you like weird stories, it's a good one. Um, and pretty sad, but fascinating. Yeah. So there you go. There you, you go. Say? All what right. have we got next? Um, okay, so next on my list was Quackalope. Your turn. My turn. Okay. So just some uh, interesting bit of sort of YouTube drama, but not really. Um, there's a board gaming channel called Quackalope. Um, it's like four people who review board games. And there was, um, I think this was like a couple weeks ago now, 
uh, rumors swirling that they had blackmailed a board gaming studio, mm -hmm. um, that they negatively reviewed one of their new games. Mm -hmm. And so the studio, in response, um, released a statement, but then also a series of emails over like months, where it does kind of look like this channel was kind of, not directly, but kind of saying like, we've already made a bunch of videos about your new board game, um, and we have trouble understanding the rules, and we've done about 50 hours work of recording in it. Um, and But we'd really like to do a whole new series of videos and have the rules explained to us better so we can properly present it. So if you sponsor us, it'll be $1,500 per video for a total of $7,500 for five videos, which is a discount from $12,500 that we would normally charge for that. Um, it's and, a discount from my usual rate of $4 million. Yes. Uh, and also, can you fly somebody from your studio in Poland to Cleveland, Ohio, to stay with us for a week and show us how to play the game so that we can more accurately represent it. And this game was still in Kickstarter phase. Yeah, I believe that it's released now, but it right. is. I think that it is still... Or it was when or this it was maybe, when happened. Yeah, it's like an indie developer. Yeah. Um, you know, who has done other games before, but they are still like small. I mean, it's board games, you know. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so then it goes through like a series of emails back and forth between them, the studio. From Quackaloop and the board game. Um, yeah, studio. like a representative from the yeah. studio, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who were like, well, that's a little steep on the price, but we could probably work with that. Um, and they're like, here, you know, the rules, we would view this as paid advertising, basically, mm -hmm. if we would do this. Mm -hmm. um, so there are rules like don't say anything negative about the game, mm -hmm. um, don't compare it directly to other games. Um, and then um, it kind of like, basically the negotiation sort of collapsed a bit um, and the studio in their set statement said that they felt uncomfortable after the exchanges about money and like wanting to fly somebody out, yeah. which I think is hilarious. Yes, um, yeah, no, they said as well in their, uh, apolo not apology video, the one before that, mm -hmm. um, we offered, we offered to work with them you know, we were going. He says we were going to fly them out, like he was going to pay for it. Yeah, well, he said a lot of stuff that wasn't in, in the, the emails. emails. Okay. Yes, he All also right. said that they approached him about Which doing it, didn't. but the first email is him, like, "Hi, this is my channel, and we'd love to." By him, we mean the main guy. The, on the main guy, um, yeah, Quacker Loop himself, Jesse. I think that's his name. Yeah. QL actual. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like in, contradicting, in my opinion, what was in the emails, where he introduced himself and is like, "We'd love to work with you," blah blah blah. So he and, said. We we offered to fly, but yeah, come and fly from Poland. That's what the email said. To can our you, studio in Ohio. Can you send somebody out like, to and us And by for studio, a week? they mean their house. I'm assuming. Yeah. yeah. I didn't really get Tom... Uh, I really didn't really get Tom... I didn't really get Cats, Tom Hooper. Could you come mm -hmm. and sleep on my couch for a night? and For a week. For a week. And explain the movie to me, and then maybe I'll give it a good review. And also pay me $7,000. Yeah, maybe I'll give a it deal. a good review. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'd love to hear the director's commentary on cats. Thinking about that, like, yeah, I mean, I was mm. just just going for cats, you know, just cats dancing. I was thinking here. Yeah, what a nightmare that was. I mean, yeah. Well, no need to really talk about that. You did a whole video on it, but fascinating stuff. The feet. I can't stop looking at the feet. Why are they not touching the ground? It's like I'm watching ice skating on pavement. <laughs> you know. It's an optical illusion. Cats are like that. Cats are like that, yeah. Yeah. Cats also love to dance. If a cat same. chose to, it could suck in enough air into it to become lighter than air and start floating mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last thing I'll say about cats. Like, just the whole idea of doing it with, like, the CG outfits. I don't get that. Like, having seen cats live uh -huh. um, one time, a lot of the fun of that is just the, the costumes, you know? They look ridiculous, and it's hilarious. It's very funny, you know? Like, no, let's let's put, like, some weird CG fur on everybody. Push the fur button! Like, you could have had them dressed as cats, but then, like, humans just dressed as humans, but, like, the same size. Mm -hmm. And, like, have a whole other element of, like, do these d dudes... Are they just humans that think they're cats? Yeah, right. Is there, or is this just, like, a weird club mm -hmm. where they they just pretend to be cats? Yeah. It's just, just like a... Well, they push the cat, like, look so hard, too. It's like, just a gang. Like, they're know. just burgling houses and... Yeah. Like pissing in alleys. Yeah. Gang things. Gang stuff. Yeah. Gang stuff. Gang stuff. Gang stuff. Dancing. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, what were we talking about? Quackalope, yeah. Quackalope. Quackalope. 
Um, yeah, so well, what interested me there is, like, what I read from that mostly is, like, obviously that's a shitty thing to do. Um, or did I even finish? So, <laughs> the end of the story is, uh, the last email that Quackalope sends to them is like, well, we're gonna go ahead and release the footage that we already have, where we talk about, um, where we review the game, good and bad, and comp then we have another one, we're gonna compare it directly to some other games. Basically the things that they said don't do, if you're gonna work with us. Mm -hmm. He's like, we're gonna do that anyways. Um, and then when they released a video about this game, it's called like Eon or something. The Terrible Truth. Something. Um, and then of like some board the, game. when the, they put out this video and it's like the game is unplayable. Yeah. Um, and they were being like so kind. They were like in the first email he's talking about like, like, I think this game's going to be great and we can really, you know, we just, we really have trouble understanding the rules. You know, professional board gamers don't understand how, I don't know. I don't, I don't play board games. I don't care. But, yeah, just basically, like, it was not, you know... They strong-armed them. Yeah, and, uh... Maybe it doesn't meet the legal requirement for blackmail or extortion. No, but... They, they, they strong-armed them. Yeah, it wasn't like, we're gonna release these videos unless you yeah. pay us money. It was more like, well, since you're not gonna work with us and pay us, then we're gonna release what we have. Uh, where we say that your game sucks. Release what we have, yeah. Yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, I read the whole series of emails, and it is really weird. I mean... Oh, it was miscommunication, though. Yeah. So then we got a lovely, lovely, juicy... Apology video. Ye olde apology video. Oh, man, it's just like being back in 2015. Yeah. Um, where your man, Jesse, talks for half an hour about... He's sorry, but it isn't his fault. Because he did nothing wrong. I'm sorry, but I did nothing wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I... Miscommunication, you know... They didn't understand. We never said that we were gonna, uh, you know, pan the game unless they paid us. Like, no, you didn't say that, but that's what you did. Yeah, you know, the emails definitely suggest that. Yeah, it really looked. Yeah, it's a shitty thing to do. So, so you were like, we're on the same page. Once you start doing a review for money, yeah, when you're getting it's no paid, longer a review. Yeah, if you're getting it's paid to review something, it's just advertising. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're agreeing to stipulations like you can't say anything negative about it. Because isn't that what a review does? You know, explain the positive and negative of something? Maybe review, maybe like Raid Shadow Legends of the future will get onto this and be like, we want you to sell the game, say it's really good, but say the sound shit. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> make it sound authentic. Yeah. They it's love that, that word. I wish authentic. the sound was good. Yes. But... You can make the sound more authentic you know, versus just being authentic. Two separate things there. Two separate things. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of which, a word from our sponsor. Um, vitamin fuel. Beans. Vitamin fuel beans. Vitamin beans. That's just beans. That should be a thing. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the other thing that makes it interesting about the whole story, kind of like more interesting than just somebody who was kind of an asshole, uh -huh. um, is just how like clear it is in the conversations that like this is how like full sponsorships work and i bet this it's the same for video games like we'll pay you to review our game don't say anything negative mm -hmm. you know and it doesn't even have to be like that it could be it doesn't have to be a direct one-to-one -one thing of like you know pay us money or whatever it could also just be like if we give a good review for something maybe we'll have better access next time maybe you we'll know? yeah well there's maybe no... we can make a deal on their sequel yeah, there's loads of, uh, like, video games YouTubers like uh, Jim Sterling, uh, who, you know, they said uh, ages ago that they used to get, like, I can't remember the particular companies, but they used to get, you know, the a preview copy mm -hmm. and any negative review. And they stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, anything negative doesn't even have to be a negative review. And I've heard that from multiple places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, even if... You know, just the, the idea of accepting money for something, you know, or some kind of other consideration. We will invite th you to our studio, we'll give yeah. you a pass to EA. Yeah, I, I would think that even subconsciously, it's going to alter the way that you view things. Yeah. You know, even if you just downplay, you know, negative sides a bit. Yeah. So, or I, even, you know, say what you want, they, they'll let you do that, but then they're not going to work with you next year. Yeah. And they're not going to say that's why. Yeah. Yeah, right. and considering that, you know... Didn't punch your time card in. Yeah, I mean, 
the world of game developers, at least with video games, I'm sure it's comparable with board games, um, is a very small world, you know. So you might not be, you might be worried not only about so get right. losing a sponsorship from one, but like word can travel, you know what I mean? Like, oh, he'll be hard on your game, so don't work with him, you know. It just seems like inherently um, corrupting, mm -hmm. you know, corrupting of your opinion. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's mental. Yeah, for especially a channel that has like forty thousand subscribers. Yeah, and gets like two thousand dollars, two thousand views on their. Like yeah, you better stuff. provide me some stats for ROI on that. They asked for um, click through rate stats, yeah. and they were like, the dude was like, we don't keep track of that stuff. Uh, I mean that seems pretty basic. Right. Right. So yeah. um, I don't know, shitty, shitty thing to do. Um, it makes me appreciate people like Stephanie Sterling a lot more, mm -hmm. you know, even though it's video games, you know, for, um, just being completely dead honest, you know, um, yeah, appreciate that a lot. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And he was addicted to his wife, right? You say something now. Oh, um, yeah, we watched. And he was addicted to his wife. We that watched one, true. one video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stop talking, Christina. Yeah. yeah, it was like that. Yeah, like we watched one video of them, and within the first like two seconds, like she's introducing the video, and he's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, kinda, yeah. <laughs> not exactly that, but yeah, interrupting her, and yeah. like she'll start saying something, and he'll be like, "We're talking here." <laughs> it's like Jesus. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, whatever. Um. Board games. Yeah, it's like in the lawyer in uh, Natalia Grace, uh, who asks a question, and then the doctor starts to answer, and the lawyer goes, uh, "Let me finish." Like you <laughs> yeah. had finished. You had finished. You dickhead. <laughs> now you're just interrupting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Yep. So Classic. what is next on the docket? Um. Yeah. Sure. Unless you've got more to say about Clock Club. Um. Do I have anything else to say about Clock Club? Well, that's um, the night then. What was the last board game that you played? Monopoly. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. when more power was out for five days. And it's mini Monopoly as well, so we're picking up pieces like this. We should have got chopsticks. We played for like four hours. Yeah. That's all the Monopoly I need to play for the next... Until the next time the power goes out, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Christina and I both discovered that we're both psychopathic capitalists. Yeah, it was, uh, it was it actually was, the it most... Was, it was a duel. It was the most fun game of Monopoly I've ever played with someone. Yeah. Because it, yeah, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because you play the same way as me. Yeah. You know, and... Um, like a boss. Yeah, like very strategically. Oh, It was oh, a lot of fun. I, I, I'll be generous. I'll, I, I'll buy that off you for 500. It's only worth 300. Yeah, and then a lot of sitting around for like 10 minutes like calculating, you know. It was very like fun. Like it's chess. Yeah, but then when it was over, I was yeah. glad for... Who is the Monopoly Grandmaster? Barry Fisher. That's right. Yeah. Who won our game? Didn't we... It was me. Yeah, you did. You know. Yeah, yeah, I was like way ahead for a bit and then it swung the other way. Yeah. And then, yeah, at the end. It ends, ended the way a lot of Monopoly games do. Like, I'm tired of this. Being thrown across Let's the just room. Look at our money. Uh, you won. You know, property. You, you, were lo you were properly losing by the time. Yes, yeah. You were mortgaging stuff. So did you. You know many things you no, no, sold to me? You were. Like, y you see, my, my strategy was stunning to you because I was buying stuff was and then instantly mortgaging it. <laughs> mm hmm. Right, to get the money back, because all I was buying stuff for was to wait for the three properties. I don't care about getting six dollars from Kent Road or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No one's ever done that before in a game with you, I can tell. Whereas I was mortgaging things everywhere, I was calling up my friends from Bullingdon Club. Yeah. <laughs> calling up your financial advisor, asking yeah. for how to win. Yeah, I yeah. need the bitch to get a six on the next one. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. That was a lot of fun. Um, okay. Next on the list, um, I don't have tons to say about this one. Bama Rush. You don't have tons to say about Bama I have, Rush? I have a bit to say, but not a ton. Okay. Um, well, well, why don't you start by saying why we watched it? Um, yeah, so I read a, an article in my news feed that was saying, like, basically I hate this documentary because it's supposed to be about, like, Alabama, like, sorority rushes, um, and then it turns into being about the director having alopecia. And I was like, oh, that could be interesting on its own. We love a documentary featuring or by a narcissist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of fun. 
But then we started watching it, and we're like, actually, this is pretty interesting. Um, it, and it, doesn't, she, it doesn't turn into that. No, she talks about it, like, three times for, like, a couple minutes. And it's relevant, because she's talking about when she was in college. Mm -hmm. and yeah, being, it's relevant. Yeah, it's relevant, mm -hmm. and I didn't think it was too much, and... Basically what happened was uh, people at Alabama University got wind that this documentary was happening mm -hmm. and her her access just evaporated. Mm -hmm. And if it hadn't been an HBO documentary or if she hadn't been on contract or something, if she'd been doing this independently, I bet she'd have stayed for another year mm -hmm. and got access again and finished it. Mm -hmm. But she couldn't. Yeah. Because it started to get really interesting where... They start to talk about all the sororities and fraternities all have representatives from this thing called the machine, which is kind of like it's kind of like the you know, the sororities and fraternities are all kingdoms, and the machine is the emperor mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and the machine is like a criminal organization, yeah, where it's like deciding who will win the next student body election yeah. it's physically. Like just mm. like destroying property and mm. hurting people. Occasionally burning crosses. Occasion oh yeah, right. Okay, occasionally mm -hmm. burning crosses. Mm -hmm. Just a prank. Just a prank, bro. Yeah, but yeah. but not just like, I mean, not just stupid shit. Like they're also like they're on the take. Yeah. There's money changing hands. Yeah, and and the actual like girls who were trying to get into sororities that were featured. That was interesting. It too. was interesting. Yeah, yeah. because um, just seeing like how much like stress, how much pressure they put on themselves to join a club. You know what I mean? When yeah. we were watching it, George says, it's like these people have never been outside. There's like people with no legs around and shit. Yeah. You know? Like, and these people are stressing out about whether their highlights But like super stressing out. Like they've all got like, yeah. they've all got like eating disorders. A lot of eating disorders. Yeah. Like it's not like I don't think that they're stressed. It's just like, like it's not like I, I'm like saying you shouldn't be stressed even. It's not their fault. Yeah, if they feel that way. If they feel valid. that way, they feel that's, that way. That's their feelings, it's valid, yeah. But, like, my god. Like, yeah, it was kind of frustrating, though, watching, for sure. Um, tell us more. Well, just because, I don't know, like... How do I say this in a nice way? Like, it's just some little club. When you leave college, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna stay friends with any of these people, you know? Unless you go to an event you know, alum events or something. Like, it's not going to be any big deal a few years from now. And some of you are, like, probably damaging your bodies and damaging yourself psychologically in order to do this. Yeah, some girls are um, very upset that they didn't get in. And, and like, yeah, just the, the amount of ritual around it mm -hmm. was, like, baffling to me. Mm -hmm. Like, these different rounds and stages of competing with each other and just the sheer expense, you know, you mm -hmm. see girls, like, going to, like, salons, like, getting their hair done, getting their nails done, buying all new clothes, paying, uh, um, there's a lady who's like a professional, like helping people get into a sorority consultant, uh, consultant. Rush consultant. And doesn't she say that she never got in to her sorority? I don't think she did. Yeah. But there's another lady who does something similar. Who's like, whose story is, uh, I wanted to get into a sorority, 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 sorority. Got it in my freshman year and I didn't and I was absolutely devastated and it stayed with me forever. Mm -hmm. I did get into my first pick in my second year. Yeah. Yeah, like, just like a lot of like Well lucky you had eight grand time then. and you know like mental energy going into something. I didn't yeah, know that before I were, watched this. That they said it cost like eight grand to join a sorority. The in, average in the first year on mm -hmm. average, yeah. And I don't know if that's including like rent in a sorority house once No, that was just saying just to get in, right? That's just the grease, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really understand. Like yeah. in in Britain, not normal universities don't have that. Like mm -hmm. I'm sure posh universities, yeah, you know, have kind of things like that. There are universities here that don't have it either. But yeah, yeah, the big state universities definitely. Um, I mean, where I went to school, um, I want to say there was like some sorority fraternity chapters, but they didn't have like houses. It was a very small part of the university that I went to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it just, that was more of a school with like a lot of like adult students as well, which probably made a difference. You know, people that have jobs and families and things to do. So it's a rich know. person's thing. Yeah, it's definitely a rich person's thing. I yeah. mean, can you imagine, you know, spending $8,000 to just join in the first year, you know, on top of whatever you're paying in tuition, on top of having to have a place to live and eat and all this stuff. All the like hair and makeup and clothing, 
Like, I can't imagine what the total cost is. I can't to try imagine and... spending $8,000 on anything. Yes. I can't imagine spending eight thousand dollars and like joining Skull and Bones, let alone fucking University of Alabama. Yeah, like, yeah. No offense, but I'd I'd etch that right off my fucking diploma. <laughs> University of Alabama. Mm -hmm. The yeah. fuck is that? Like, yeah. Like yeah, me me and my fucking elite tech crew up in Doncaster. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I I definitely felt really bad for all the girls that were. Because, like, they're young, you know, they're at a... Well, I do feel bad for them. They're at a time a where, lie. like, they're still... They're very, like, sensitive, you know, about... Yeah, no, I, they're trying no, to fit I, in. I know. They want to have, like, a sense of community. You know, I can understand all that. But they kind of just need to, like, get some jobs and... Go know, outside. Go outside, meet some people that, you know, that you're not going to put on your resume for a sorority. Just meet people to enjoy people. Uh -huh. You know? I mean, it's almost like... Yeah, they put so much effort into it. It's like it's like they're trying to get into the fucking Marines, you know? Yeah. It's, like, it's not that deep, guys. Yeah. You know, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Get your degree. Graduate. You're going to be okay. I like, like the idea of joining the Marines and then be like, Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got the form. Like, you did all the physical stuff. But, like, you're more a paratrooper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. What else were you thinking about it? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a shame that it didn't get deeper because mm -hmm. there was interesting stuff there, it, both in terms of just how it was affecting people and the machine. Yeah. Like, that would have been very interesting if they could have got something on that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I mean I, I mean, I appreciate that it wasn't, like, stretched too far, but there was definitely more to talk about, so... Yeah. And obviously that disruption... She just ran out of access. Yeah, and the reason is because there were rumors circulating online that... The production was planning on putting hidden microphones on girls and sending them into sorority houses, which never happened. No. Like, if you've ever tried to use a microphone, like, you know, it's not going to work. Just people screaming over each other. You're not going to hear anything. Um, and also, yeah. unethical. Well. well. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, you, you know, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't put microphones on people to get audio to use in your film mm -hmm. you get it so it's like oh yeah they're meeting under the they're meeting under the chip shop yeah sure i could see that but it never happened but um, you wouldn't need microphones inside yeah. you, could, and then, you could get a microphone and, then, and hear that through the windows yeah like a shotgun mic well and also there was like a girl the who satellite dish on it that's right the satellite dish earrings on no. somebody going in <laughs> this is the new style uh there and was this a, volume you could hear a pin drop there was one girl who um like they were like like, randomly, like, searching girls going into the sorority party or something to see if they had hidden microphones. Like, the university was, they made it sound like. Yeah. And one girl had a hair tie on the back of her shirt to, like, hold it up. And they said that it looked like a microphone. And she got kicked out of any consideration for her sorority. Yeah. You know, so obviously they were spooked. I don't know what they thought people were going to hear, you know. They were going to hear um, racist shit. And they were going to hear... Possibly. Um, uh, like... Not shit you wouldn't expect from anywhere from people from any anybody talking, but like stuff that would be embarrassing, like about dick sucking and yeah, especially like 18, eighteen year olds. What I would expect they, they a would lot hear of like very embarrassing be. things, and so that's a reason. Yeah, and they would probably hear you know about like yeah, the machine earned itself loads of money by like turning fucking puppy dogs into hot dogs yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, who know. knows? Yeah, I mean that definitely to me it. I mean, I wouldn't want a microphone inside my house either, you know. Oh, God, no. And I can talk to all my organized crime at the club. Yeah, you, so. just, you, just be, you just hear us talking to the dog all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Clyde Bush. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was, it was a, a good watch, though. It was interesting. Um, for, you know, someone who's had, like, zero experience with sororities, fraternities, it was like watching, like, getting a window into, like, a world of, like, aliens, almost, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, but are, are you sure we're not like a couple of old farts who are like, you think you've got problems? I maybe. mean, seriously. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, myself, I really did not have time to be like joining clubs and stuff in college. You had to I was work. Just trying to not be homeless was yeah. a really big top of my list. I've got to go home. Need I'm... to have electricity so I can do homework. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that was a much more pressing concern than whether the popular people liked me. Yeah, you see, that is such a weird experience to me because that sort of, like, thing, like, 
high school like popular thing. Like, that that was not at my university. Mm. Like people were there to like get a degree mm -hmm. and fuck off. Yeah. You know and. Do you think it was just is that just your university? No, do you I don't. Think it, do you think it's a cultural difference? I think it's a cultural difference, and mm -hmm. and and also my university didn't have a big uh, housing campus. Mm -hmm. It had a big campus, but it was mm -hmm. you know all university buildings. It's not like everyone lived shoulder to shoulder. Mm -hmm. They did have like student housing and stuff, but yeah, I get you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think probably in Britain, the higher up you go in terms of the more expensive and the more exclusive universities are, I'm sure there is a bit more of that. Yeah. Well, I think the scale kind of works that way here, too. Like, nobody goes to community college and joins a sorority. Right, You know, yeah. it kind of begins, like, state college, and then I'm sure that it gets more extravagant and elaborate, you know, the further you go up, I imagine. Yeah, and obviously the whole football thing. Like, we had a rugby team at our mm -hmm. college, and I knew, like, I think I knew the captain of it. Mm -hmm. And he probably talked to me about it once. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a thing. Like, I'm in yeah. the rugby team. Oh, like, some universities here are, like, yeah, super dependent on sporting yeah. events. Yeah, that's bonkers. And I guess that's America, yeah. I mean, personally, I, I was trying to get a degree. And, we were talking know. about that, so I didn't know this, but to be, like, a, a football player, a professional football player, you almost always have to have come from college football. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know a lot about sports, so if you know, any Americans... And... Really? Really. Um, but that's my impression, is that scouts for the professionals, um, professional leagues, they go to college yeah. sports teams yeah. and recruit there. So, like... So you've got all this, all this shit of getting people who aren't academic but are, are athletically gifted, mm -hmm. like pushing them, them through college. Getting a full-ride scholarship. Getting mm -hmm. them a full scholarship. Whereas in Britain, it's like... How old are you? I'm 15. Can you read? Not well. Doesn't matter. Do you want to be a football player? Yeah. You know, yeah. you're really good at football. Mm -hmm. why, do you, why do you need a degree? Well, there's loads of money in college well, yeah, that's football it. as well, I think, you know. Because from what I understand, like, college sports players, you know, they're students. Um, they're not getting paid a salary, but the universities are profiting, like, millions and millions of dollars off of these kids. Yeah, you know. and that isn't just an American thing though, because I remember at my school, they spent absolutely shitloads on getting a new astroturf field, mm -hmm. right? <coughs> and I, yeah. that so I went to two different secondary schools, and one was way more impoverished than the other. Mm -hmm. But the second one, it definitely wasn't poor, but they got all the you know brand new astroturf and all the fencing around that, and all the fucking German books had. I can't remember what it was called, like the big B, which is now two S's. They changed it in like 1990 or something. Mm -hmm. Basically, they if the two S's appear in a word, it used to be in German, you write it as like a weird letter that looks kind of like a B, mm -hmm. but it just represents that. Right, okay. You know. Hmm. So, like, it would constantly be like, ignore that bit. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I had one German book that was talking about, like, the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I remember in history watching a video about the Suez Crisis, which happened in, I think, 1967. Mm. And it was literally like, as you may have heard, the Suez Canal. Like, it, like, it was 1970 when this was made. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, that's fascinating. Because um, it's not like that here. No? Um, yeah, oh, like every year there's going to be a new revision of a textbook. So right. that every year you can get kids to pay like $500 for a textbook. In high school? Oh, in college, no. Yeah, no, in college it's like that. In high Britain. school, well, in my high school, um, books were provided, and, you know, they're, like, torn up and stuff, yeah. but... dicks everywhere. They weren't, like, super old. You but one? they're also American textbooks, so... Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drawings and books, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a bit of highlighting. Yeah. Or, well, like, a bit of shading on that dick. Yeah. yeah. You know, Damien got in trouble once, uh, like, got sent to the head of year... Because uh, we, for some reason, our science books were like big A4 books, mm -hmm. and on the back of it, he drew like an enormous picture of our friend with a penis for a nose. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like this thing was beautiful, right? Like mm -hmm. there was veins and shading and you know flaps. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Damien. Yeah, 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 and yeah, just, yeah. That's the end of that story. Yeah, right. Worth it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. What is it about drawing knobs? Um, it's fun. It's funny. Yeah. 
It reads well, right? I mean, I think it's funny still, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of harder to draw a turd without making it into the, the poop emoji. Yeah. And people understand what that is. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You know, whereas... Depends on how good at drawing you are, I suppose. Yeah, and a penis you can literally do in one motion. If you don't yeah. mind doing it like a bubble penis. You know what I mean? <laughs> bubble penis. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 So was that a fascination in your schools as well? Because every school I've been into, well, not, not actually in the second one, but in the first one, like any bathroom you went into, there'd be knobs drawn everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and always just knobs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you never see any... Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it was that extreme, but... Uh, yeah. Never dies, you know. Yeah. 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 It's not always those. I remember on my math table, someone had like etched in, like just the torso of a woman, mm -hmm. a naked woman, mm -hmm. like not the. They obviously didn't know how to do do the face. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's the harder part. Yeah, it's hard. Did it have no hands either? Uh, no. No hands. No hands are hard to draw. But it was a very why. nice torso. Hmm. Yeah, it's like why 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 have you done that? Gotta start somewhere. Yeah, a very voluptuous woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got the hourglass and everything. Yeah, really. Yeah. I assumed it would be like a. You know, unattractive woman. I'm joking. No, I, I mean, like I said, no head. So yeah. That's a turn off. That is a turn off, yeah, for a normal person. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, it was kind of like uh, attractive. Like, why have you drawn it then, like on this table? Like, can people do that? Can people draw stuff and then masturbate to it? Um, I assure you that there are people who do that. Yeah, yeah, and they're on Patreon. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Anything else to say about Bama Rush? No. No. Um, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it. It was interesting. Yeah. It was, you know, pretty unique, which I appreciate. Yeah, and and yeah, I think the whole process is gross, as you might have guessed. Yeah. Of that, like... Yeah. What yeah, the hell? unnecessary... What a waste of time, what a waste of effort, anxiety... Uh, anxiety... Money... Um, yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt, and uh, yeah, I felt bad for those girls because you can tell like some of them are like making like they make like a CV with like glamour shots of, of themselves, themselves um, because for the, the sorority for the sorority, sorority, to tr soror uh, sorority. for applying for the sorority yeah, the because fraternity. you have to be like a certain level of hotness to get into the top soror sororities, I guess. Unofficially, so they're spending loads of time on and how probably they look. not black. Yeah, they don't like people of color. Is they they got a few. Got. They have a few. Yeah, got to get some tokens. But weren't they saying that Alabama only desegregated the sororities like 2013. 20, what are you doing, Alabama? What's wrong with you? Don't even ask. A lot of things. Don't even, don't even talk don't to even, it. Don't even, don't even talk to it. <laughs> don't let it see you looking at it. Don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It thrives off the attention. Just bark more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, there was something I was going to say about... Uh, yeah, it's like those those girls who, you know, were so worried about that. So what? Yeah, this is it. So worried about getting into a sorority, soror sorority, sorority. And then there's a bit in the documentary where one one of the subjects they've been following says, "Yeah, so I was roofied last night." Yeah. Oh yeah, and, and she says it like casually. And it's like unclear if anyone's been raped or not. Yeah, like, I don't that think so. My friends found me in the woods the next day. And then the director was like, has that happened before? She's like, oh yeah, like three or four times. Like, Jesus and, and she didn't want to go to the police, right? Because I uh, don't want to cause a fuss. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But the guy who roofied her, uh, people did find him and beat his ass. So I guess that's Oh, positive. that's okay. Yeah. I mean, are you sure it was him? He should be in prison though. Yeah, yeah, he should be in prison. Yeah. Yeah, he's just going to do it again. Guaranteed. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was pretty disturbing. Yeah. Um... So, like, yeah, th there's something to actually worry about. Don't worry about, like... Yeah, maybe worry oh, about cellular covering mics. your your drink up, you know, when you're out somewhere. Mm -hmm. Worry about all these rapists here running around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it needed, they needed, like, Will Smith to pop in and be like, in fact, right, you don't give a shit about sororities. You kicked him out. You kicked him out. <laughs> right? You told the sorority you don't accept them. Right, what you're going to do is you're going to fuck off. You're going to buy yourself a nice dress, and you're going to study really hard, and you're going to get out of this shithole. Yeah. And go live your life. Yeah. And none somewhere, of this will matter. Somewhere that isn't here. Yeah. Somewhere that's not Alabama, ideally. 
could be a lovely state. Sorry, Alabama. You could have besmirched it. It's okay. We live in a southern state, kind of, so. Kentucky. Yeah. Don't really have room to talk. But man, it's nice to live in the woods. <laughs> My goal yeah. for place to live, as few people as possible. Montana is next. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, under the sea. What's that? Under the sea. Under the sea? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. And the moon would be more interesting if it had a sky. I bet it gets mm. really, really, you know, depressing there. Like, I bet the, black. the earth looks beautiful from there, though. So that's a plus. Yeah. Like many things, the earth looks better the further away you are from it. Yeah. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like America, you know, it's best enjoyed from the outside. Yeah. As you have learned. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, it's not like, I, not like it was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, you are American now, so... That's right. Mm -hmm. As you can tell from my flawless accent, y'all. Y'all. Yeah. You're not gonna We're gonna tire fire ten four. <laughs> yeah. We got tire fire ten four. Tire fire ten four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, if you want to move on. All right. Uh. What is a woman? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Forgot we were gonna talk about that, didn't you? It was last I'm night. Every woman. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So angry right wing guy Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh is in a documentary, I think it's from a couple years ago, um, and Twitter, um... It's at least from before this year. Yeah, I think, I thought it was like 2021 or... Oh, did it? Right. I can't recall, but it was free for 24 hours on Twitter, um, I saw yesterday. Thanks to so, Elon Musk. Thank you, Elon Musk. Thank yeah. you, Elon Musk. Thanks. Starting off Pride Day, Pride Month. Yeah. With, uh... A little bit that. of hate, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff, Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Holocaust uh, month, I like to put Lenny Riefenstahl mm -hmm. stuff out there, like just for the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Just you want to show all sides, George. You know, all sides of the debate about Nazis being bad. Yes, and I think we know who we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Nil bogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nil bog. Nil bog. Yeah. Um. So we saw that that was going to be up for twenty four hours on Twitter. And we're and I convinced and you to you watch were, it. You were like, should we watch it? I was like, this, th you know, Christine, this guy's really cool. He has a lot of good points, <laughs> yeah. right? He has a luxuriant beard. This guy who's obsessed with trans people. Whenever yeah. I'm on Twitter, that's all I see him post about. Yeah, I'm not actually familiar, yeah. really. I mean, he's a name I've heard, and I've seen tweets from him and stuff. Did he start off as that? Like, or was he... I don't know anything about his background, really. Yeah. Personally. Um, it's always like weird stuff like, yeah, he started off antiquing, yeah. and then he got into this. Yeah, right. Yeah, he had an antiquing podcast for six months, and then he said something like really fucking out there, and it got him And then got famous. And then got famous yeah. and dropped that. Yeah. Um, um, do you want to explain what a woman is? You mean actually answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, so he's interviewing people all over the country, doctors, different people, um, therapists. Doctors, and randoms. Ending uh, very, like, aggressively, like... <laughs> and interviews with people, and then at the very end asking them, what is a woman? Nobody can explain to me, what is a woman? Mm -hmm. So George was, looked at me and was like, explain what a woman is, okay? Uh, well, there's two answers to this. One, in terms of biological sex, uh, a woman is born with a, you know, exit chromosomes, you've got a... Biological, biological woman, woman is an adult An human adult female. human female, born with a uterus, typically. Um, and then the social answer, mm -hmm. gender, so you have biological sex, and then there's gender, which is a social thing, mm -hmm. um, and varies depending on where you are, as much as he wanted to pretend that it doesn't. Yeah. Um, and that means something different according to different times and places. Yeah, and obviously this is all about the trans issue, mm -hmm. like it's an issue. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it kind of ignores the fact that a non-zero number of people are born into sex. Mm -hmm. You know, without any medical interven intervention, mm -hmm. you know, that's, yeah. you know, that does happen. Yeah, some people are born, you know, or even develop with different hormones. There are yeah, some women who have much, hormones. much higher levels of testosterone uh, yeah. than average, you know, they're, and, and vice versa. So, so, so I think that, you know, the mistake people make explaining it, not that they're wrong, but like the, the social sciences professor, mm -hmm he interviewed, who I thought was pretty good, yeah. but, you know, explains, you know, it's a very difficult subject and all this, and then kind of gets pissed off at him. Mm -hmm. 
Well, because he's being um, rude. It's well, yeah, no, I, I'm not saying he's wrong to. Why can't you just tell me the truth? But that's part of his shtick. But that's what I just did. That's what he's yeah. doing. So you then he yeah. gets the bit of you going, where? Yeah, that's the goal. Clearly, mm -hmm. is to frustrate and annoy these people that he's interviewing so that they may not be as good with their arguments. They may get distracted by the fact that he's being a knob. Yeah. I think that's the entire strategy. Yeah. Bi biological sex exists. Biological female exists, but the social idea of a woman is ultimately arbitrary. Yeah. Kind of like um, you could point to, uh, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, that's obviously a Western. But then the name escapes me. That film with Johnny Depp in black and white. Mm -hmm. Can you remember what it's called? Which one? Where he plays a cowboy. I don't know if I've seen that. Is it a Western? Is it a noir? Mm hmm. You yeah, know, I get you. You know, it's, I mean, I know that's not a great yeah. analogy. Well, you but... were making the comparison as well, like, you know, like a Western. A lot of people couldn't think of what a Western is. But then New Wave, which is yeah. like a similar look, but it can be about all different things. And, yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, here's like, what... what is Ran? Is Ran a war movie? Yeah. Like, I mean, it has war in it. Yeah. Um, well, here's what all of, Drama. It com all of it comes down to. To me, is like it's really easy. Um, who cares? Yeah. Why do you care so no, he's, much? He's what? just looking for the truth, Christina. Well, he kind of sets it up like he's worried about children, you know, children know, yeah. being transitioned. But then he'll go to like another interview where the premise seems to be all that like any kind of transitioning is bad. And then he gives a couple examples. There's like a guy um, who's like, uh, oh, okay. So the first example was two twins, um, one of them. Uh, in a circumcision freak accident, gets their wing wang taken off completely, and um, the assuming that any of this is true, even, um, mm -hmm. and the parents were advised, why don't you raise him like a girl? And then he's on Dr. Phil later saying, you know, but I never wanted to play with Bart dolls, I wanted to play with trucks and play outside. Yeah. Uh, can't you see how that's the exact argument, like, just flipped and reversed, like... Um, I wanted to read comic books and play video games as a kid. Yeah. I'm not trans, but, no. you know, but people like different things. Do you know what I mean? And also, he didn't choose that. His parents chose that for him. So yeah. he's not trans. It was a forced thing. It was, it was the, you know, we realize now it was a medically inappropriate thing to do. Yeah. They thought it was the best thing to do. It was a mistake. Yeah. You know, and obviously, it, like, messed him up and stuff. And yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's completely different because you're not someone trans. saying, I feel like the different gender. Yeah. And then the second example was um, a lady who said, I was like a like an alpha female, like, and I don't know what the it, time frame it, was. It looked like pictures of, like, the 80s and stuff. I, I think she said, like, I was a, like, power executive in the 80s. Yeah, she was, like, an executive and, you know. and that other people convinced her that she might be trans. Yeah. So Let me worry about blank. Transitioned, yes, uh, and then regretted it. Like, again, then you're not trans. If, you know, why is this difficult? And coming back to my main point, I don't care. You know, I don't give a shit. He, he loves to throw out these, you know, and they all do, throw out these arguments of like, well, what if I want to call myself a piano? Am I a piano? Does that make me a piano? Will you call me a piano? What was that? What? Did you just fart? No. No. Oh. I was doing stuff with my hands, like this. Okay. Um... And my answer is, I don't care. Okay, Mr. Piano, sounds good. Like, I don't give a shit. Don't hurt anybody, live your life, you know. Why do you care so much? Yeah, but as well, you know, well, there aren't any human pianos. There are, you know, women. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying that those are the kinds of arguments they make. You know? What if I want to be a cat? Am I a cat? They made that sure. argument, that's been disproven. Yeah, yeah. That oh, yes, where they were talking about their kids going to school saying that they're animals. And like refusing to say anything but barking and meowing. That was a discredited report. That never happened. Mm -hmm. um, that was like internet rumor stuff, and he presents it as fact. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess his main argument, you know, you can boil it down to okay, all right, if people want to, you know, mutilate their bodies, as he likes to basically say, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's fine. But uh, it's wrong that kids are being made to do this. Or yeah. ki your kids are allowed to do this even if they want to because they're kids and they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that? Um, well, I would say that um, anything like that, uh, you know, first of all, I'm an American. I believe in freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Um, but kids can't drive. Yeah. Well, 
I, I personally feel that is up to a child and their parents and really none of my business and their medical provider. Yeah. Uh, who I'm assuming will, you know, there will be close medical supervision through this time, which is from what I understand how it works. Surely. Like a years long process. Like they're not just like you feel like a girl today. Well, let's take it off right now. Like it's like years. Get on the wing wing like machine. Making sure that this is what you want. Um, and you have to go through therapy and all kinds of stuff for it to happen. Yeah. Not an expert, but that's my impression yeah. of how it works. Yeah. So it's not just America where it's going yeah, on. It's right? ultimately none of your business. Do you know what else goes on in this country? People homeschooling their kids into literal Nazis. You know. Yeah. Like Nazi textbooks and shit. Yeah. Um, they don't have a problem with that. That's free speech, and that's you know fine to do that to your kids. Yeah, and that's way more damaging than anything. Yeah. Um, you could do. Yeah. Yeah. To so a tiny sliver of the yeah, population. And, and it is such a tiny sliver. And yeah. As well, you know, that... Of children, especially. Yeah, very tiny, yeah. So I, you know, ultimately my feeling is that's none of my business, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's between you and your parents and your doctor, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Came across very grumpy. What's that? He came across very came across, grumpy. He did come across very grumpy. I mean, when I you're... I'm not sure if that was a great look, really. Yeah, but... well, you were saying while we were watching it, you're like, you know, if he were... Like less of an asshole, he could get so much more out of these people. Yeah, that could help his his side of the argument. Yeah, if you would just calm down and not try to provoke people so much, you know, you could get way more if you're just, you know, professional, considerate. Yeah, because um, the whole the whole sort of righteousness of it of like, you know, from his point of view, uh, no, people are denying the truth. There's only one reality. People keep saying it's their truth and their reality. There's only one of those things, and this is such a fundamental basic question. And, you know, there's something wrong with society if people can't answer this question. And it's like, well, you know, um, like, there is an unbelievable amount of corruption in Congress and the Senate. And you've got all these Congress people and senators employing their own family members. You've got all of them, like, basically taking kickbacks constantly. Yeah, and the... Um... You know, you know yeah, the, there's some the real problems. Incestuousness between business and politicians. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, there's other stuff going on that is important. And I do think that... Way more important than what is a woman. Yeah. Um, what is a democracy? Yeah. 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 Yeah, other stuff. And, um... Yep. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Your dad's a famous army general. You're 4,500 times more likely to become... An army general, not a famous army general. Stay tuned soon to hear a, more about that. Than a normal yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's... Yeah. If, you, if your parents are senator, you're 8,500 times more likely to become a senator than someone whose parents aren't senators or a senator. Yeah. That's the problem. That's interesting stuff to talk about, yeah. Um, instead of, like, getting obsessed with this culture war stuff, you know. Um, and, yeah. It's all lookism. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, you know... They've hijacked I, the the sort of national conversation or the, the mind space, the bandwidth, mm -hmm. where we're not having conversations about corruption or, you know, what the Supreme Court is doing. Child poverty. Child poverty. Mm -hmm. You know, inequality. Uh, you know, yep. people getting through fucking high school without being properly taught to read. Uh, the fact that Nestle still exists. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, Exactly. Like, hateful, you know, super religious Christian fundamentalism creeping into corners of society. Those are things that are important and are going to have a long-lasting effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is like, we might as well have gone back to being like, gay people shouldn't be allowed outside. Yeah. I mean, okay, why? Yeah. Yeah, because you're gay and you fucking hate that gay people. Yeah, are open. Are open. Uh, yeah, it can be. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are. I mean, what is it? Plenty of reasons. You know, obviously, like, you know, religion can have an impact on people sure. and what they think about this, definitely. But when I see you got the Pope now, who's like, I'm cool with it. I wear, yeah. I wear a big buff jacket. Yeah, that's totally. who he talks. I wear, I wear the big buff jacket. I'm actually from Sweden now. Dur -dur -dur. I was gonna say that sounds more Swedish. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, he, how, how do you do with the Italian accent? You know, kind of like, even though I'm from Buenos Aires originally. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. So what, yeah, I mean, it kind of seems like the conclusion he comes to, without really saying it, but it comes across that he thinks that 
you know, it's really not about trans children to him. It's about all trans people. Yeah. And that they should just be in therapy because there's something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, I... Well, I mean, I keep on, I keep saying, like, I don't understand, but I do understand. There's a lot of money to be made in outrage, especially yeah. over thing, things that people find sensitive and outrageous, you know. You want to make a load of money? Start talking about abortion, you know? Yeah. About being either anti, side, being anti, really? either side, yes, yeah. but especially the anti-abortion side, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it just it's something that just you know grabs people. Anything that has become niche in the mainstream sphere, but still enough people here believe in it. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. they, you you couldn't get on to CNN and start saying Nazi shit, mm-hmm. but if they let you, most people would be against it. But a pretty significant portion mm-hmm. would be like, yeah. Yeah, yeah you not see a significant portion is, you know, what matters. I mean, you know, do you know what sells really well? Ghosts. Like half yeah. of Americans believe in ghosts or something like mm-hmm. that. So make a show about ghosts. You'll be great, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, apparently so, processed food. Yeah. That's all I ever get commercials for. Yeah. Although, <laughs> I was listening to some music the other day, and I listened to one Daddy Yankee song, and, like, the next two days... All the adverts on YouTube were all in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember, yeah, well, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. After we did the Andrew Tate video and we watched like, we probably watched a good like 20 hours of Andrew Tate stuff, um, just like binging it to get in the zone of, you know, what we wanted to talk about with that. And I got like nothing but Andrew Tate stuff for like a week after that on my YouTube account. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Did you become a more empowered man? I did. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Machete. You gotta bang, treat bang. him like shit. Yeah. Machete. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Okay. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. Just when I see somebody like really obsessed with trans people, you know, my immediate reaction is well. You have a, you have some sort of you body a, dysmorphic a, issue or, you or have something, a thing with tra- you know, for or trans you want people. to be a trans be- person, or you yeah. want to be with one, yeah, or something. Yeah, I mean, which isn't you know to say that that's the case, just that that's no, where my, my mind for it goes there first, you know. Um, but it's probably just about content, really. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, that's definitely why Elon pushed it out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, not content for him to make money off, but yeah. it's a nice distraction. Talk about this. Oh, side note. Twitter, your video player sucks ass. Yeah. It was awful. This is the first time I tried it. Um, first of all, we had to watch it on my phone because it's Twitter. Uh, there's no Twitter app for Roku TVs. Yeah, there's no Twitter app for the TV. There should be. And we weren't gonna, I, I wasn't about to crowd around one of our computers you know, with like a headphone in each ear for both of us to watch it. So yeah, it was awful. Like We kept trying to like... You kept opening it and like going to pause it and then hitting toward the middle and like, uh, no, it's over there. Yeah, right. It's over in like the top left corner. Yeah. Who designed that? Who designed that? Who designed that? It was the times. No. Why is there no instant like back 10 or 15 seconds button? Why do I have to scrub through the entire timeline and like, oh shit, I just went way too far. Because it's Twitter, it's for sharing 140 characters or less. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, well, whilst we're on that then, do you want to have a mither about Max? HBO oh, Max. yeah, I forgot we were talking about talking about that. Yeah, so uh, HBO merging. This isn't even interesting. With... We're just complaining now. Yeah. yeah. Well, there'll probably be a lot of that. Um, like I think it merged with Discovery. Is that right? Um, and changed the name from HBO Max to just Max because they, from what you read, they didn't want to sully the HBO name by yeah. having it attached to Max. Yeah. Which is funny. Sully the name. Um but then they introduced an entirely new app for it that yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, I thought the HBO app was like decent as far as these apps go. Yeah. Um, and then we get on there, it can't remember anything that we watch. It doesn't remember where we were. Because uh, we do a lot of pausing, watching things, yeah. so we can go discuss. Yeah. You know. So w- what, what happened with our Max video is we found that um, uh, after updating the app, a lot of things that weren't in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio would be automatically... Um, transformed, stretched, stretched, yeah, that stretch. mm-hmm. into a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So suddenly, I was watching Succession, and suddenly, like, everyone in Succession looked, like, super wide. Mm-hmm. That was frustrating, really yeah. Fun, yeah. really weird. And, and um, then we, like, checked on other shows, 
on the and app, they, and, and it didn't do and that. And it didn't do that, and I'm pretty sure we have to uninstall the app. I think we're going to have to reinstall it. Reinstall yeah. it. But typing that in was like max aspect ratio problems. Mm -hmm. It would be a lot easier if it was HBO, mm -hmm. but max... That it, could be so many things. Yeah. Yes. You mean the max? You've got the maximum in, aspect ratio MTV. problems? <laughs> yeah. 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 Annoying. Yeah. It's like if you introduced a, an app called Carl. Yeah, it'd be hard to search for. How do I get Carl to work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with Carl today? Is Carl down? Yeah. Is Carl down? New Sunny episodes, Carl. Coral. Anyway, Coral. Uh, I yeah. guess we're done, are we? Unless you want to. Yeah, I don't know if I have anything else. There's nothing else on the list. Any other app? Netflix, you're boring. Yeah. 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 Like nothing new on Netflix for a while. The only good thing I think possibly about the new HBO is that obviously they've added a bunch of content from Discovery. So yeah. we can blast through that and then cancel it. Yeah, um, I guess one last thing. Another moan. Uh, we watched the Jared documentary, mm -hmm. which was fine, uh, but it had originally aired on Investigation Discovery in March, and they hadn't taken the the bits on either side of the commercials where it says, you know, this, this TV show is about, you know, a diddler. So you might mm -hmm. not want to watch it. Yeah. Don't like that. So like every ten minutes we see this warning. Every ten minutes, because just... that's where the commercial break was. Like yeah. just cut just that cut out, out when you put yeah. it on Max. Do a I'm... fade to black there from black screen, whatever. No, I, I'm convinced that's where the adverts are going to be. Yeah. When they introduce oh, yeah. them. Well, we'll see about that. Not for fifteen dollars a month or some shit. I'm not watching fucking commercials. No, yet. no, no. It will be a new um, economic twelve dollar uh -huh. version. Yeah, well, they're all trying to do that now, aren't they? Yeah. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Yeah. All right, I guess we should check on El Hippo. Yeah, Hippo's beginning to miss us, I think. All right, anything else? Not really, no. Um, no I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about next week. I'm see, sure we will. See what kind of garbage we watched this week. There is, there is no video <laughs> coming next week, normal video. There's one of these coming on Sunday, next Sunday. But there's no normal video. I'm doing nepotism next, and it's going to be a bit longer. Yeah. I think. Maybe not too long, but... A lot of research. Yeah. So if you're seeing this on the Sunday it's coming out, there's no normal video coming out on Friday. The next video will be one of these again, but then it's back to normal every Friday. Yep. Unless I, you know, have a breakdown. Again. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.